What's going on guys? My name is Derek. Welcome to my channel Euro Superbike Life and today it's 520 chain conversion day. <laughs> Welcome back guys. So that's right, we're putting on our 520 chain conversion and all the goodies from AEM factory that go with it. So without further ado, let's head on over to my desk. I'll show you what we're installing and some of the tools that we're gonna need. All right guys, so we're over at my desk uh, and here are some of the things that we're going to be installing today. All of these items can be uh, purchased at Belisimoto.com. Again, check those guys out. Uh, if you have a sport bike, any sport bike, not just European, Japanese, what have you, they have parts for you. So check them out, Belisimoto.com, links on the screen. But uh, most of these parts are from AEM factory with the exception of a few. So we have our uh, both sides uh, wheel nuts anodized in black, so black here. Uh, AEM factory hub anodized red, there we go, red. We have our rear sprocket in black. I stayed with the, um, the stock uh, gearing. So we have 16 front, 41 rear. I didn't see a need to change that. And then we have our AEM factory quick change hub. So I quickly put these together so that you guys could see what it's going to look like. And that is the uh, wheel and nut for the other side. We have a red spacer that we're going behind it. I think it'll look pretty sick. And then of course we have our 3D chain in black and gold and our titanium fasteners that came with everything. So these are all the things that we're going to be installing today. Now let's take a look at the tools that we're going to need to do the job. So first off, you're gonna need something to remove the chain. I like using a pneumatic cutoff wheel. You're then going to need a chain breaker or a chain installation tool. You're going to need a 14 mil socket. You're going to need a five mil Allen key or socket or wrench, what have you. You're going to need a six mil Allen key, wrench or socket, what have you. You're going to need an eight mil Allen key, socket, wrench or what have you. You'll probably need a 3 8 ratchet. You may need a 3 8 extension. You may need an electric ratchet. That's what I prefer to use. You may need a half inch impact driver or pneumatic impact driver. You may need a half inch to 3 8 um, adapter. Then you'll need a 55 millimeter socket for the rear wheel. I forgot to mention, you'll need a large 12 millimeter Allen key wrench or socket. You'll need a large flathead screwdriver and you may need a mallet. All right guys, so we're over here at the bike um, and I'm gonna try to do something that I normally don't do. I'm gonna try to record this with one, maybe two cameras. Uh, that way I won't have to edit for hours upon hours upon hours. All right, so first uh, you wanna find a spot on your chain. Uh, we're, I'm going to use a cutoff wheel and cut it off. So I have the original link here, so I'm going to do that. I'm gonna position it here and grab my safety glasses I'm going to grab some air, it's going to get noisy, and I'm going to zoom in here, and we're going to cut off the chain. Okay, so you can see here that we just knocked the faces off our, um, our chain link here. Now we're just going to grab a screwdriver. There we go. Remove the O-rings if they don't drop off. Now the chain will separate from the back. We can pull out that pin along with the O-rings and then the chain will disconnect from the top and the bottom. If you have it in neutral, you can then just pull the chain out. This is a 525 chain. There's nothing wrong with it. There's only a thousand miles on this thing, so it's still really good. Um, but it's heavy. So now that our chain is removed, what we need to do now is we, we need to remove our rear set and the side stand bracket. The reason we need to do that is in order to remove our front sprocket cover, our cover has a bracket that goes down past this, um, this side stand bracket. And if you remove these two, I believe they're five mil or four mil screws, you won't be able to get this plastic bracket all the way off unless of course you want to break it. We don't want to do that, so it's easier to remove our rear sets uh, here and here, and then remove our side stand bracket here and here. Uh, I believe most of these, all of these are six mil, and these two up here, I believe, are four or five mil. But let's get some tools and start taking things apart. Okay. 
Let me set those aside. Need to move these, uh, which I believe are also six mil, um, so that we can get to the pinch bolt here for this bracket. There we go. That one, I'm gonna put the bolts back in the spot so I don't lose them or confuse them with anything else. We'll loosen that up, but then we'll remove these. Remove that one. And now, oh, don't lose that washer. And it all slides off. Now we don't need to disconnect our shift lever at all. We just need to have this hang down out of the way so that we can now remove our cover. <clears throat> there we go. So there's one up here and then one down here. Okay. Move the bottom one first. And then our front cover comes off and you can see this bracket down here was in the way. So the front sprocket is now exposed and we will use our impact driver and our eight mil Allen to get this one off. Now you notice it was spinning there. Um, I'm not sure if you're supposed to put the bike in gear so it doesn't do that, but I didn't want to break any gears because I didn't know how tight this was on here. I'm going to have to look up the torque specs, but I just ra rather have it freewheel and just have my impact gun just hit it and then spin it off. So that's off. Now our front sprocket just slides right off. Notice the orientation. This is a shallow end. And then there's a deeper end here. Deeper end on most bikes always goes this way. Uh, Alright, we have our new driven sprocket here. So again, deep side facing in. Slide that on. Grab our So that is installed for now. Um, again, I'll look up the torque specs and we'll do our final tighten on the torque specs and I'll post those on the screen. The okay, so we have our rear hub and sprocket. So um, my wire cutters and then we'll get the lock spring off. So we have some safety wire right here. So now our lock spring can be removed like so. And I'll take this safety wire off of here. There you go. Take that off. Throw it in the garbage. Make sure that doesn't end up anywhere near your tires. So we have our large 55 millimeter socket. I'm going to pop that on there. And let's see. This is supposed to have a lot of torque. We'll see if it has oomph to get this off. And it does. All right, so there's a washer behind here, but we can pull this entire hub off. Don't forget this washer as we move forward. There we go, so washer here. And now this entire hub will come off. And you can see our large Allen keys on the back. So what we'll do is we'll get a large Allen key in here. We'll set this thing in a vise and then we'll spin all of these off. All right guys, so here's my sprocket set up in the vise. So I'll just set the camera down and we'll use our large Allen. All right, 12 mil Allen on the back. Hold, grab this. There we go. I'm going to change these eventually to, uh, to uh, probably black titanium, but I need to use them for now because they're not here yet. <laughs> and we need to reuse the Kush drives as well. All are off and like you saw, this whole thing slides out now and the cush drives will come out as well. Uh, okay guys, so we're back over here at the rear of the bike. I went ahead and pre-installed the cush drives into our, our quick sprocket carrier, as you can see. Just make sure that they are seated all the way in. Then slide our hub all the way in there. Make sure it's seated really well. Let me zoom in here. And we'll install our quick sprocket carrier and we'll install the hardware as well. Now these are all titanium fasteners. And I'll show you here in a second, but these, the bolts for these slide into a groove. So I'll flip this over so you can see this one here. 
you see how it's not directly in that groove so you just rotate this until it sits in that groove okay those are all hand snug so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this assembly back over to my uh, desk and vise uh, that way we'll be able to install these uh, with our 12 mil uh, allen key uh, onto these uh, cush drives here but I'll, for just right now i'll just put them on finger tight all right guys so as you can see i've just got the hub slide slid on here it just slides on and off like so I got all of these torqued down to specs. I'll put that on the screen again. It's from version one of a PDF document that I found online. It may or may not be accurate, but they're on here. I haven't torqued these down because I don't have any specific specs for those. Uh, but once everything is on here and tight, I will torque the, uh, the quick change uh, hardware down. I did put Loctite on these items, not on the Cush drives. Again, we're gonna be taking these off in a couple of days and replacing them with a uh, black titanium one. So the silver is just temporary. So what we need to do now is we need to put our spacer here. Grab this. We need to slide our spacer in sp on here like so. And then we need to get our anodized nut. And slide that on. All right, now that's just on there finger tight. Once I get the chain on here and locked in gear, I will torque it down. I believe the specs that I found are 230 Newton meters. So I got my 3D chain and my chain breaker slash press kit along with the uh, the link pin. Now some people like to wipe, you can see all this excess that's on here. Some people like to wipe all that off before they install it. Um, I don't. Uh, I'm going to put it on the bike and then once we're on the bike and everything's torqued down the spec and I go to clean and finish everything up then, that's when I'll wipe all this excess off. But at the moment, I will not. So what I'm going to do Get that stuff out of the way. <clears throat> I'm gonna feed this through here. Go. Around the front sprocket. That's really snug. And it'll actually have to loosen up a little bit. Now, there's another video out there where Five, Five Up did this. Um, and the only part that I disagree with with him on, uh, and I know why he did it, and that for him, it works just fine. So when he installed his chain, <clears throat> there are a couple of um, pinch bolts back here where you can adjust the chain slack. So as your chain wears, um, it gets looser and looser as the chain stretches a little bit. And when he put it on, uh, he loosened it up and he brought the hub all the way back to its furthest position so the, so the bike has as much um, uh, wheelbase as possible. It was as long as far back as possible. Then he put the chain on. And when you do that, when your chain loosens up, um, there's no adjustment whatsoever. That, that's it. You'll need to replace your chain or he'll need to take that off, take a link out, and then readjust it again, which is not ideal for me, but I understand why he does that. He does uh, rolling drag races and smackdowns, and I get why he do does that. And by making the, the wheelbase back here as long as humanly possible, he helps with wheeling or anti-wheelie. So um, for us street riders, um, and you just want to ride around and, and maybe do track days, I don't suggest you do that. Obviously, leave yourself some adjustment. So, <clears throat> so it looks like we need to cut one link off here. So right here. We'll cut that off, then we can slide our pin right in there, and we'll be done. I won't bore you guys with that, I'll do that off camera. Okay guys, so our 3D chain is all installed. Uh, we got the uh, outside clip on and dimpled really nicely. Uh, the actual the tension is not actually that bad, so we're almost pretty good there. I still need to torque down this rear nut, uh, but let's go ahead and get uh, everything else assembled up here in the front. Okay, we are going to start with the front sprocket cover. And none of these bolts had, um, had thread locker on them. So I went and put some on here. Um, there are two bolts, two different lengths. The short, a longer one goes in the bottom, shorter one up top. Next, we're going to install the side stand bolts here. They have two washers. Do not forget the washers. The washer, here we go. 
They have two washers. The washers go behind the bracket. So I'm going to slide the bolt on to the bracket. And then I'm going to put the washers on the bolt in the back. So I'll raise, it, raise this up. Right on there. Get this aligned. Now I did find a, um, a document online for torque specs for the V4 Panigale. It was version one, so I assume there are multiple versions. But um, I couldn't find exact specs for this, or the, the, the torque specs seem to be um, not. In alignment, I guess. I don't know exactly know how to say it. All right, so what I mean is that um, in this document, it's a PDF document, I'll put the link on the screen and I'll provide a link um, to the document in the description. It said that six, this general torque for the six mil bolts was about 10 newton meters, which was about seven, seven and a half foot pounds of torque here in the States. Um, but that document also said some things that were a little bit different. For example, it gave the size of other bolts like uh, the bolt for our sprocket. It said that it was a 10 mil. My bolt is 8 mil. Um, it provided um, torques for the um, the rear hub carrier uh, nuts. It provided sizes for those, but the sizes that I have versus the sizes I am in the book were a little bit different. So I'm not sure if those torque specs are accurate, but that's what I'm going with. So if you hear me quote a torque spec and you know for a fact it's not right, leave a comment. It's not because I I think that I'm right or whatever. It's just what I found online at the time, and I haven't been able to find a, a version two of that document. So I'm going to torque these down. Here we go. Click. Okay, so now we're going to put in the pinch bolt nut. And I don't know if this this setting here, there are num multiple, but this is in the lowest, furthest forward setting. I don't know if that will be ideal for me. I still get to, uh, to ride this bike this year. So I think we're just about done. I still need to torque this down. I need to put the uh, bolt in, uh, excuse me. I need to torque this down on the uh, sprocket side. This main nut, I think it's about 230 Newton meters-ish. And then I need to put the uh, the washer and the nut on the other side. I think we are good to go for this episode. Um, got our 520 chain conversion all done. Um, I'll bring you around here for one last look. But uh, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, or smash it if you didn't like it. But until next time, guys, take care.